Hello everyone. Welcome to Agile Cast, a podcast series for agile enthusiasts from Zibia Agile community of consulting and transformation. Zact is a community of seasoned agile coaches and passionate agile enthusiasts. We live by our core value of knowledge sharing which is the only way you learn and care about your community. We have been hosting webinars, meetups, annual conference named Agile NCR and off lately we decided to share our podcast series which can help our fellow agile enthusiasts in exploring the well proven solution in the space of business agility. In this series I am going to talk about myths, mysteries, misconceptions of scrum and agile. The first myth, scrum is a silver bullet. It will solve every problem. Scrum means delivering faster. We will be able to deliver all features we want on time and to budget, won't we? This myth is prevalent among many professionals and executives. For executives, the common assumption is that Scrum will deliver projects on time, scope and budget, often with an emphasis on getting more in less time. Actual reality is Scrum's true focus is to deliver better solutions to clients in sprints which are iterative and incremental in nature. Scrum helps in getting in faster feedback which in turn helps adapting ourselves quicker to deliver better value to customers. One of the critical decisions is sprint length. The factors which affect the sprint length are the frequency at which business requirements change the frequency at which market conditions change and impact the product, the timelines of getting customer feedback, preference for shorter feedback cycles, the level of uncertainty about the technology, changes in technology, the scrum team's maturity levels, its product and domain knowledge, the interdependencies with other teams. The next myth is scrum means that there is no documentation. Reality is, in Scrum, the focus is on developing solutions earlier in the process, but that doesn't mean documentation is skipped. The documentation of a Scrum project is different. Instead of a fixed requirements document, there is a product backlog which contains product backlog items which can be written in terms of user stories, a living and evolving entity that shapes the ongoing development. While poor management of product backlog can result in scrum projects go not going in the right direction. The other myth is no manager for scrum projects and they are completely unmanaged. No one bears bottom line responsibility for delivering. There's a lack of process, a sense that things are a free for all. Actual reality is in scrum. The focus is on developing the highest order backlog items first. The forecast is either to deliver on time with the projected scope or to deliver a defined set of features by a projected date. Scrum has a number of different ways to plan and forecast completion. Scrum's most streamlined approach combined with the element of self-organized team creates an inaccurate perception that there is no tracking of co progress and no accountability for the work. The reality is that Scrum projects are often tracked and managed more accurately than traditional projects. The focus is on what is important at the time than the work is being carried out. The highest ordered features are always the focus and tangible deliverables are produced at the end of every sprint providing a very real checkpoint of progress. At the same time, the people accountable for the work are being held to that accountability by their colleagues, not by a percentage complete number. Another myth is Scrum allows development teams to do what they want. The reality is this Scrum teams are self-organizing in nature and they leave this by adapting three things. One, shared goals. 2. Clear accountabilities and 3. The right boundaries. Development team has no titles defined which gives the feeling that everyone is equal with no hierarchy. This gives them the opportunity to openly come forward to collaborate and self-organize as a team. 
when a development team is empowered as it is essential in scrum they will self organize to determine the best way to accomplish their work factors which promote self organization are scrum time boxes fixed sprint lengths optimal development size with no title scrum values frequent inspect and adapt cycles definition of done and cross functionality the other myth is no planning no requirements no way to predict release dates and so on this is not true scrum is based on empirism which means the act of making decisions based on what has happened and experienced there are three pillars in empirism transparency inspection and adaptation we have a product backlog which is owned by product owner that is an ordered list of everything that is known to be needed in the product it is a single source of requirements for any changes to be made to the product the product backlog evolves as the product and the environment in which it will be used evolves product backlog refinement is the act of adding detail estimates and order to items in the product backlog this is an ongoing process in which the product owner and the development team collaborate on the details of product backlog items during product backlog refinement items are reviewed and revised every sprint starts with sprint planning the main purpose of sprint planning is for the scrum team to collaboratively plan the work to be performed in the sprint so that they can arrive at what functionality the increment will deliver along with how to deliver it and craft a sprint goal that provides direction guidance during the sprint sprint planning answers two questions first what functionality can be delivered by the increment in the sprint and the second how the work will be carried out to deliver that increment the inputs to sprint planning are ordered product backlog definition of done retrospective improvements projected development team capacity and past performance of the development team so there's a, so there's a lot of planning in scrum in fact the emphasis is on planning as a team for short durations rather than one project manager planning for the completion complete project duration other myth is anybody can become a scrum master select one person from a team and ask him or her to perform the role the reality the scrum master is a very crucial role in agile transformation in fact they are the flag bearers the success or failure of the transmission transformation depends on how passionately they are carrying this transformation plan the scrum master is responsible from promoting and supporting scrum as defined in the scrum guide scrum masters do this by helping everyone understand scrum theory practices rules and values they do it by helping team achieve self organizing and cross functionality remove impediments and protect team from external interferences facilitating scrum events as requested or needed help product owner in managing the product backlog helping organizations in adapting scrum who would become the scrum master there could be a lot of factors which can make scrum master effective but the ones are absolutely must in order to become a good scrum master are a person with a good growth mindset a person who has good understanding about servant leadership and facilitation skills maintains good relationship with team management and can influence relentless in continuous improvement most importantly a person who understands emotions and applies emotional intelligence where required another myth is more meetings means scrum is going well the reality scrum was supposed to be meeting free except for the five known time boxed events like sprint planning daily scrum the sprint review 
sprint retrospective and the sprint itself apart from this there are no more meetings recommended and if your schedule is filled with multitude of so called short meetings then it is a clear sign that something is not right in the way scrum is being done in your team hence the reality becomes more meetings means your scrum is going into the well next myth is daily scrum is a status update meeting you must have seen multiple instances where team members give updates on what we did yesterday and what we plan to do today they discuss issues and leave assuming that today's scrum was successful in reality that's a failure daily scrum is a key inspect and adapt event for the development team to inspect their work done since last daily scrum and forecasting upcoming work for the next 24 hours helping the development team to plan replan their work for the next 24 hours daily scrum helps the development team to assess their progress towards achieving of sprint goal daily scrum helps development team to collaborate inspect on how they intend to work together as a self organizing team to achieve the sprint goal and create the anticipated increment by the end of the sprint daily scrum is time boxed to a maximum of 15 minutes irrespective of sprint length happens at the same time and same place to reduce complexity the key outcomes for the daily scrum are an updated sprint backlog that reflects the adaptation by the development team towards achieving ment of sprint goal updates on existing impediments lists of new open impediments helping the team to self organize or seek scrum masters help the impediments are beyond team reach and towards resolving this impediment adaptions towards the progress on achieving achievement of sprint goal improved communications and collaboration between development team members the other myth is everyone should stand in the daily scrum reality not required as i discussed earlier daily scrum is the opportunity for the development team to inspect the sprint goal and adapt the sprint backlog it is focused meeting and time box to maximum of 15 minutes standing up is only one of the suggested ways by which you tend to keep yourself your discussions short and focused one the other myth we have is uh, more velocity means better value delivered reality need not be velocity means is the number of units of work example story points delivered by a team in a sprint it is a myth that success of the team can be measured by an increase in team's velocity velocity is neither good nor bad it is just a metric that can be handy for planning it is a metric to measure capacity not productivity it does not indicate the value delivered it is quite possible that we deliver a small number of story points but still deliver high value to the customer it's a good practice to capture the value of each product backlog item delivered this way we will know what the value we deliver in a sprint to our customer the other myth is the technical person should become a scrum master reality scrum master is a servant leader technical persons tend to interfere their technical impulses with the scrum master responsibilities as long as this is taken care there is no problem in making a technical person as scrum master if that cannot be guaranteed then it is better to choose a non technical person to be a scrum master because they can then ensure that the discussions do not cross the time limits and the meetings focus remains sharp the other myth is we should have a sprint zero reality we see in many cases that the first sprint as blank sprint to allow teams to do dry runs and become accustomed to the system this is a bad practice every sprint supposed to be producing an increment which is potentially shippable and delivers value to the customer there is nothing called as sprint zero as per scrum guide 
The Damiti's spring backlog is a commitment. It has to be honored in all circumstances. Reality, it is not correct. Sprint backlog is just a forecast and not a commitment from the team. Sprint backlog is formed in sprint planning with the selected product backlog items for the sprint along with the plan towards delivering the product increment and realizing the sprint goal. This forms a basis for the development team to inspect and adapt as they work on these items learning more about the work needed to achieve the sprint goal. Sprint backlog is constantly updated throughout the sprint by the development team. Please remember only development team can change the sprint backlog during the sprint. They will add new backlog items, update existing backlog items and may also remove some items if they are not required, demonstrating empirism that is inspecting and adapting throughout the sprint. These changes are also visible to scrum team, making them transparent, promoting a shared understanding of how the sprint is progressing. It is possible that unforeseen things which were not considered during sprint planning might creep up during the sprint execution and derail the forecast. This does not mean that you make weekends working or force people to spend long hours in office to complete the sprint backlog. If there are uncompleted items in sprint backlog at the end of sprint, then it simply means that either the planning was not correct or there were unexpected complexity or capacity issues which have come up during the sprint. These needs to be discussed in sprint retrospective and adapt them accordingly. In such cases, the uncompleted sprint backlog items moves back to product backlog to be considered in future sprints based on its priority. Please understand, don't bite more than what you can chew. The other myth we have is for a successful product delivery, the product backlog items should become zero. This is not true. And the fact is, as long as product exists, product backlog exists. Product owner starts with what is initially known and best understood requirements at the beginning. As each sprint produces an increment, the increment is inspected and adapted in sprint review by the scrum team. Product backlog is dynamic. It evolves as there could be changes in business requirements, market conditions, changes in technology, external regulations. These are inspected and adapted throughout the life of the product. These changes are also made transparent as the product backlog is visible to the scrum team and backlog items contain description, order, estimate and value helping in shared understanding. The success can be measured by the checking the value delivered to the customer with quality and this is where scrum master and product owner play the most important roles. The next week we have is there are sprints called design sprint, architectural sprint, hardening sprint, stabilization sprint, testing sprint and so on and so forth. This is not correct. Every sprint is a normal sprint and must produce a potentially shippable increment with quality which delivers value to the customer. The next myth is there is a certain myth that burn down charts, burn up charts and cumulative flow diagrams must be used by the scrum teams as metrics. The fact is the scrum framework does not prescribe any of these metrics. Depending on the values these metrics drive, you can choose to use them or drop them altogether. The next myth is the Scrum or Agile only works with small projects. The reality is the Scrum or Agile development team consists of small cross-functional and self-organizing groups that collaborate throughout the development process. This approach can be equally effective on small projects 
and larger efforts to develop complex systems since agile teams typically divide and conquer. For larger projects, this means that multiple teams can be organized and focus on separate features, components of system functionality. For agile projects of all sizes, but especially for the large and complex, continuous integration of developed code on frequent basis is a critical success factor. More specifically, project teams need to check in and test newly developed code against the larger solution within a production-like environment. In an agile project with typically short development iterations, parallel development efforts and frequent delivery of functionality, project teams must integrate their work often to detect and resolve errors as quickly as possible with the ultimate goal of being able to deploy at any time. If project teams delay the integration to just prior to release, they will likely run out of time to adequately perform testing, address defects and prepare the infrastructure. Agile teams should ensure that they have the right automated build and test tools and the appropriate processes in place to support continuous integration. So these were some of the myths I wanted to highlight. Practice Scrum in the right way as described in the Scrum Guide to get benefits out of it rather than falling into these myths, mysteries and misconceptions. Thank you.